Variables are a very important concept in computer programming. They allow you to store and retrieve information from your computer's memory. You can, for example, store the name of the player in a variable and then you can show that later to the user. You can do all, all sorts of things with variables. You can do mathematical operations. And what we're going to do now is create our first variable. There is one important step when you create a variable, which is the variable declaration. And then there's also another step, which is the variable assignment. Just so you know, both things can be done at the same time. So we can also have variable declaration plus the assignment at the same time. So let's declare a variable, as I said, something that will describe the name of our player. In C sharp, when you are going to, when you create a variable, you need to specify the data type of the variable. That means is our variable a number? Is our variable uh, a string, which means text? Is our variable a true or false value, or is there a decimal point number? Well, in this case, it's uh, text, so it's a string. So we're going to type string. That is the data type. Now we need to give our variable a name. I'm going to call it player name. That's going to be the name of my variable. Now, because we finished our statement, we've declared our variable, I'm going to type semicolon. As you can see, the editor is kind of highlighting that because we've declared the variable, but we're not using it. So that is obviously not optimal. Um, that is why the editor is telling us, please use that variable. Let's assign now, the, let's do an assignment where we give this variable a value. We're going to give it, we assign by using the equal sign. And because it's text, what we want to give, it needs to be inside of double quotes. So this is going to be, for example, Mr. Pink. We finish our statement, so semicolon. So we have declared a variable and we have assigned uh, a variable. And it's still complaining because we haven't really used that variable. So let's show show that to the user. And by the way, notice how I'm using comments just to keep track of what we're doing. So it's always a good practice to comment your code and so that when you come back to it later, it's easy to know what thing, what is going on and what each thing actually does. As we saw before, we can use that print method. So I'm going to open brackets so that we can pass in what it, what it is that we want to print and what it is that we want to print is that player name. Now see how as I type the name of the variable that we've previously declared, I can see that in here. It is being suggested to me that that variable has been declared and that I can just use that. So if I click on that suggestion or press enter, we will actually uh, save ourselves the time of typing. So that is called auto completion and it's common in um, code editors. So we can now save and if we go to Unity and I need to start by clearing the console because I was doing other things here. Now I'm going to play my game. And you can see here, Mr. Pink. So we are getting that shown. You, we are basically declaring a variable, assigning, and also showing it on the screen. Now, what if we want to do both things at the same time? String, let's call this enemy name. And we're gonna call this Miss Orange. Close that statement and that's it. So we are declaring and we are assigning. By the way, before you assign, so in between these two lines, the actual value of this variable is null, which is a special keyword in C sharp to determine that something is basically nothing or it hasn't been declared yet. So that's null. And we can also show this to the user. So we can show that print and I'm going to make use again of this auto completion. And there we go. Now, what other types of variables can we create in Unity in C sharp? Uh, we've seen string. Well, there are there's quite a few of built in types. These are all called data types. There are a few built in data types or types that we can use. And um, as we um, create our own classes, we can also use those to declare variables. But for now, let me show you some of the basic ones, some of the ones that we'll be using the most. So we have integers. For that, we use the int keyword. And that gives us a big range of numbers. 
probably not going to use all the way to the extremes, who knows? An example would be just to type 100. Then we have floats, which are numbers that have decimal point, and you specify the decimal point just with a point, and you have to type the letter F at the end of the float. Now, strings that we saw, we use a string keyword, and it's just for text, so like hello world, for example. Booleans can have a value of true or false. For example, false or true, and see how we're not using quotes here. We just type true or type false. For a full list of the built-in data types, just go to that URL, which will take you basically here, and then you can see some of the other types that are available. This documentation is uh, the uh, part of the language API of the things that come with the C Sharp language. So let's go back to our code and let's declare an, another variable. So the, um, that float, for example, um, let's say the, the energy of our player, we can declare float energy. And in this case, it can be something like 1.5 that would be the value of the energy. Or you can have an integer and a number of lives, for example, number of lives, int uh, n, and you could have 10 lives. So that would be another example. Also, you can check whether the, the player is alive or not. So is alive, and you can have a Boolean, and then something like that is alive, and it can be true or it can be false. So in that manner, you can declare variables of these other data types. Now, regarding flows, there's something interesting here, which is that, let me show you in a, in a note. Now, something interesting here is that when we declare a float, for example, one, we can, if the number is one, we can just, we can type one F, right? But we can also just type one. And one will always convert to 1.000. So if this, this is an integer, this would be a float, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to, the, to, to infinity, really. So that works. If you don't want to type the F when you're writing integer numbers, you can do it like that. C sharp under the hood is really doing this transformation for you. Now, if you try to type, for example, 1.5 F, uh, F, that's fine. But if you type 1.5 and you are missing the, the F, um, you will get an error, and the reason for that is if we go to that original list of building uh, data types, besides having float, you also have double, and double has a much higher range of numbers than float, so it goes all the way to minus to, to 10 to the minus 325, so that's really, really, obviously, really big or small number, and that is obviously more than this or, or bigger range than this, so. If you type 1.5, that is actually a double, and a double cannot convert it to a float because you are losing part of the number, part of the information of the number, and, and, and C Sharp is not going to know how to transform that. The same thing happens if you try to go from float to int uh, 1.5, for example. How does that translate to int? Is it 1 or is it 2? We don't know because int don't don't have this part, so avoid that and also avoid that. So to summarize regarding this, when you are using float and it has a decimal number, a decimal point, you just always use the F. And if it doesn't, you can avoid using the F if you don't like to type the H. The F is each time, which I have to confess is something that happens to me. So let's go back to our editor and look at that. So you can see how energy is uh, 1.5 F, but if we don't type F, we get that error thing, and it says here that uh, something from type double cannot be converted to float. The same, uh, if I type one, we won't get that error because uh, an integer can be converted to float very easily. So that was a bit of a, a um, clarification that I wanted to, to make, which might be a bit too early, but it's just something to keep in mind. Now, the other thing I wanted to cover in this lesson are arithmetic operations, which can be performed with integers and, and floats as well. So the arithmetic operations that we have here are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. For example, let's say that you want to calculate the total, um, the total score of a user. And uh, let's say that you have the, the total score is 
they completed 10 levels and each level gives you 10 points so you'll have 100 you could have this as in uh, the levels completed he completed 10 levels so she completed 10 levels and then uh, your total score is the levels whoops the levels complete levels completed so let me uh, completed times 100 so you can get that and that is that in that case we're using the multiplication or you can easily add a total for example total could be 10 plus 1.5 f as i mentioned uh, you can convert from from integer to float but um, be careful that if you try the other way around well total two if you try that you're actually going to get an error because as i said you cannot go the other way around in this implicit manner you can explicitly convert them and you can define how it's how it's going to be converted but in this case try to avoid it um now the last thing is um well we still have um subtraction is it's quite easy so the number of lives could be um the the could be a number minus another number like that that would be four and division of course um parts uh, the parts that you get out of something could be for example 100 divided by 50 in that in that manner you can divide you can also combine the operations so you can have a combination you can have for example 100 plus 1.5 f times 10 divided by 100 and just like in algebra multiplication and division uh, go first and then addition and subtraction follow so that is the same that with algebra and you can also use brackets and in that by using brackets you the, everything that's inside the brackets will be executed first i can easily show this on the screen like that print combination and that will show the total to the user something else that i can do is concatenate two different strings and including um including a number so let's let's show something like the result for my name by using the plus sign we can join two strings we can concatenate two strings so the result for player name so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to go here that will that will say the result for mr pink and then i want to have some more text so another concatenation is and let's now join actually put this total here so that will that will show the result for mr pink is and then the result of this operation so let's go to unity and see see what we get with that so let's press play and the result for mr pink is 10.15 what is really happening here under the hood is that combination is actually being transformed to a string by by c sharp and then the two strings are joined together so we've covered a lot of ground and basically i'm gonna do like a very a very i'm gonna do a very quick recap so we are using variables to store information and to uh, manipulate and present that information we declare variables like that specifying a data type and we have all these different data types to to use and, and obviously a lot more here and then there is a the part of the assignment where you actually give the variable that that value or and, and that can be changed later as well um we can easily work with numbers in this way but keep in mind that you cannot um that you cannot go um in an implicit way from a number that has more detail to a number that has less detail so you cannot go from float to int but you can go from int to float you can use the same operations as in normal algebra this is what you use for uh, division multiplication and you can concatenate different strings join different strings in this way by using the plus sign and when you join join a string with a number that is not a string what is really happening is that that number is being converted to a string and well in this case a uh, combination is being converted to a string and that is how we are able to put this together so before you move on let's do um, a challenge and so that you can get some hands-on experience create a script that converts celsius to fahrenheit degrees so this is the formula if you have if you have a number of celsius you multiply that by 9 divided by 5 and then add 32 and that will give you give you the fahrenheit 
as a result. So create a script where where you declare a variable and you declare a variable which is the temperature in Celsius and then you perform the calculation and then you show that to the user. So have a try and then I will show you the solution. So pause the video now and have a try. All right, so let's let's solve this this uh, problem. We're going to create a variable that's going to be Celsius. And so we have, for example, 20 Celsius. And for the result, we're going to create this Fahrenheit value variable. The calculation is going to go like that. We're going to do C times what was the formula 9 divided by 5 plus 32. And now we can show that to the user. So print the result is plus F. And if we run that on Unity, if we execute that, we get our result, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's move on now to the next lecture.